So you lie to yourself to be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. We all do it. Hey guys, today we're going to discuss the three trademarks that make a Christopher Nolan movie. In his films, he uses a non-linear sense of time, uses music to create a sense of time and to build emotion, and uses an extreme circumstance with his characters to exemplify a greater human issue. Christopher Nolan doesn't depict most of his movies in the story's chronological order. Instead, he jumps around in time to clearly give away specific plot points and not giving away other plot points to present mystery to his audience. Memento is a perfect example of this. Memento is about a man who lost his wife and suffered a brain injury to his amygdala, causing him to suffer from short-term memory loss. His main goal is to kill the man that killed his wife. In order to present mystery in the movie, Nolan presents the movie in a backwards time frame as a way to feel subjective to the main character. In an interview about Memento, he explains this perfectly. I decided right away that by far the most interesting way of approaching that concept was subjectively, to tell the story in the first person. And my solution was to deny the audience the same information that the protagonist is denied. And my approach to doing that was to effectively tell the story backwards. The best way to draw it is as a hairpin, like that. That's basically the end of the movie. This stuff is the black and white stuff. This is color. And this is running backwards as a series of jumps. And what we do is we cut between the two the whole way through. So we alternate scene here, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there and they meet towards the end of the film. This tactic confuses the viewer just enough so that they are unsure of where the character is going, much like how Leonard feels after waking up in every scene. Trait 2 uses music to create a sense of time and to build emotion. Nolan uses the score in Interstellar by giving an urgency to time. In Interstellar, we see our crew on a planet where every seven minutes is 20 years on Earth, meaning that they have to work quickly or all their loved ones back on Earth will grow up and could die. To make things worse, there's a massive tidal wave racing toward our crew. Let's go beyond the grand orchestrations and compositions and focus on the rhythm. The rhythm here is 60 beats per minute, the same as a second hand on a clock. A second doesn't provoke any emotion, so let's pretend that after 10 seconds, you will die, starting now. This psychological conditioning changes our thinking of the second into a count on of our own death. Now all that Nolan has to do is add bass for intensity and the clashing strings to give us shivers. Similarly in Dunkirk, to accent the bomber planes, Nolan uses the shepherd's tone. The shepherd's tone is when you have three octaves of ascending notes. The highest note is getting increasingly softer, the middle note is staying loud, and the lowest octave is getting louder as it ascends. If you repeat this over and over, it sounds like it is constantly ascending in pitch. This trick musically mimics the Doppler effect from the planes, but also mimics our feelings and suspense about the scene. As the planes get closer to our actors, the music gets louder and higher. You can really hear it in this scene as the planes get closer and closer to the soldiers. Trait 3 uses an extreme circumstance with his characters to exemplify a greater human issue. In Memento, the main character struggles with his purpose in life. He has short-term amnesia and creates this goal to kill the person that he thinks killed his wife. Nolan teaches us throughout the film that our reality and meaning is what we create and label meaningful, not based on what is true. The character Leonard thinks that he will remember killing his wife's killer, and it is such a large event and goal accomplished, but in reality, never does remember it in the end.